qualitative and quantitative research, they complement each other. They are both good, they are just for different purposes. If you're a PhD student or a researcher who's doing a qualitative study, then you should definitely stick around for this video because we're going to talk about exactly what qualitative research is and importantly, what constitutes good qualitative research. And we're also going to talk in more depth about the difference between qualitative and quantitative research designs. So let's dive right in. And this video is a real treat for you because it's a live recording of a masterclass that I did with Jarek Kriukov, who has, by the way, an amazing channel on qualitative research that you should definitely check out. And this live session was an exclusive part of my program, Research Paper Mastery, that normally people pay over $5,000 to get access to. But I'm giving you an extract of this live masterclass here for free with Dr. Jarek Krukov. And as I said, we're going to talk in more depth about exactly what qualitative research is, what constitutes good qualitative research, and what are the main differences between qualitative and quantitative research. So let's dive right in. First question that I'll, I'll answer is a question from Nicole and it's asking, and it's probably a good start, what does qualitative, uh, good qualitative research mean? Okay, I'll start with what qualitative research means in general. Uh, so as I said very briefly, there are quantitative and qualitative research. Quantitative is more uh, interested in quantities and quantifying things, which means that it's interested in numbers and statistics. And even if uh, quantitative research explores things that do not have to do with numbers or statistics so for example attitudes beliefs it does uh, quantitative research explores these topics through quantifying things so so if you're expressing an attitude and you're expressing that you strongly believe something eventually the analyst the person doing the analysis will quantify these responses so we'll turn your beliefs or how you agree with something or disagree into numbers so that's what it is as you know surveys questionnaires all of that is typically associated with quantitative research and qualitative research on the other hand is uh, kind of the opposite uh, it's uh, interested mainly in more individual and personal perspectives and experiences so this has to do with kind of different world view and, and general approach to how do we explore things so like I said before quantitative part is more usually associated with this kind of scientific inquiry and uh, scientific points of view and beliefs so uh, so people tend to believe that science and being objective and observing and counting things is is how we learn about the world and then qualitative researchers are more towards you know we have to ask people we have to ask people what they think why they do it why they believe something so it's, it's just much more personal as a result it's more the methods more common methods are interviews focus groups discussions even collecting documents or diaries from people in all cases it's more personal. I don't, uh, I don't have a question uh, specifically about quantitative versus qualitative, so I don't want to talk too much about that to answer all the questions, but, but that's the general distinction. And uh, and while I did say that I even, uh, you know, lean towards one more than the other, and usually it is the case, but I don't want to say that one is better than the other. It's definitely not true, and both uh, really complement each other. They are just used for different purposes. For example, what you can do with quantitative research is explore some relationships and correlations. That's what they are called in quantitative research. So if I want to explore the relationship between, for example, watching TV or something and grades or grades that you receive at school, you can do it through qual uh, quantitative research. Uh, I'm not going to de uh, into detail of how to do it, but you can do that. You can, uh, you can gather some survey and basically count that relationship, establish whether there is that relationship between, for example, the hours spent in front of the TV and your grades. A qualitative study will not be able to do it. So that's also very important to know, and this will be part of my response soon about common mistakes as well. It's important to know what it cannot do. And what it cannot do, for example, is to establish any causal relationship, any causes, causes and effects. It's possible to kind of indicate something that something may have to do with something else, but you can't really make claims such as this influences something else. There is simple no way. You can rely on what people say. You can ask, uh, do you watch TV often and, and, and then explore even their grades. And you can suggest that it seems that maybe watching TV and, and the grades at school seem to be somehow related, but, but you can't really make strong claims. So what you can do, however, of course, much better with qualitative study is to explore why, for example, they do it, why they, they watch TV, what do they watch? So things that we don't know, basically, to put things on a survey, so quantitative study, 
you have to know what to put there in the first place. That's how these things complement each other. For example, if I want to explore, and uh, this is what I did uh, in one of the studies, migrants' identity. So in the UK, Polish migrants' identity, uh, specifically language identity, is what I explored. So, so when you, I, I'm a non-native English speaker as well. So, uh, so I thought, okay, it's, it's interesting that when I speak English, I feel like slightly like a different different person, and and I felt like maybe even the, the personality that I communicate is a little bit different for people with whom I speak English as opposed to people with whom I speak my mother tongue. And that, therefore, I, I conducted this study. It was about migrant identity, language identity, how how and whether your self-perception, how you feel who you are actually changes. The reason for that study was to establish in the first place, what is it? What can we call? And is there a such thing as a lang a language identity? And later, the same results were used for a quantitative part, which kind of measured that. Because if I didn't do the qualitative thing first, how would I know what to put in that survey? We don't know whether this identity exists. We don't know what elements of that identity exist. So this is to find that out. I, con I conducted this qualitative study. I talked to people, I had interviews, I gathered their diaries. And eventually I, I suggested what this language identity may include and therefore like i said i could put that on a survey and distribute a survey so gather much more you know many more responses from more people but i have to first find out what to put in that survey so this is kind of how qualitative and quantitative research they complement each other they are both good they are just for different purposes in quantitative research if you're doing let's say a study of jaywalking uh, people crossing the street Ill illegally I can ask people in a qualitative study why they cross the street in this particular place. Maybe I want to know why this is happening. Why is it a problem? But I can conduct a quantitative study to kind of almost see the future. I can gather information about how often, when, who crosses the street. And I can project into the future and say, in the next two years, 2000 people will cross the street here and maybe, you know, 15 will die. So, so it's uh it's tragic but yeah but that's what you can do you can kind of almost see into the future you can suggest things uh, that haven't uh, happened yet so both are extremely important and extremely interesting but like i said uh, qualitative research is what i mainly do so now yeah let's let's continue with the questions a good qualitative research so i'll just finish nicole's questions first a uh, good qualitative research it's really hard i don't think i'll be able to answer this question because of course uh there are so many criteria for doing a study uh, I guess the starting point would be that it has to be needed. There is a need for it. That's very important. I often say, and this also answers the question about common mistakes. I often say just because there is no research into some topic does not mean there is a need for that research. So that's, that's a common mistake when people say, well, th there is nothing on this topic means I, I can do and I should do a study. Not necessarily because there are plenty of things that nobody explored. You know, nobody explored my diet nobody explored you know how often i order takeaway uh there is no research about it is it important probably not so doesn't mean that that a student will you know do a, a phd about my dietary habits because uh, there is no need for it there's no need it's not going to solve you know any universal problem so i guess uh, a good qualitative study has to be needed of course it has to be realistic and possible that's another thing uh, for which reason i very often also stress uh, and I encourage people to, to keep it very narrow and very focused. That's also very important. A common mistake is that people want to achieve too much in their study and they try to, they have so many goals and they are saying, you know, things like this, you know, the situation, some universal situation in the country, you know, will possibly improve as the result of that study. Of course, it is important to be ambitious and I'm not saying you can't do a study that will have such you know important contributions as long as it is narrowly focused on one issue that's happening one issue ideally sometimes there are different elements of that issue but as long as you're focused on something that's uh, that's your main problem uh, so that's another thing it has to be doable and it has to be realistic and ideally quite narrow in that sense that it, ha it has to be very focused on an individual phenomenon or issue but that's another probably aspect of a good quality study uh, and then all kinds of other things, of course, it has to have good methods, good research questions and all kinds of things. So I'm not, I can't go into detail 
everything, but some of it will be covered in my other responses. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want personalized help to write an excellent thesis or publish research papers in Scopus Index journals, if you want to get exclusive access to these live masterclasses with experts as part of my research paper mastery program, then definitely book a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to go over your main challenges, your goals, and we'll see if working together is a good fit. And if it turns out that it is, then we're going to get into the trenches with you, roll up our sleeves and help you write an excellent PhD thesis and publish papers in Scopus Index journals. So book that free one-to-one -one consultation. The link is right below this video.